Hi guys, it's Debbie from HealingFromBPD.org. I want to apologize that I look a bit disheveled today. Puffy eyes and pixie, I don't know what's going on with that. But I've had a couple of rough days and I'm doing the best I can to take care of myself and a couple of things slacked, I guess. Um, but I know that that doesn't matter to you and that's not why you're watching this video. So anyhow, I will carry on. The main point of this video is going to get into hypnotherapy, hypnosis, and how it's helped me because I expressed online today that I will be going to see my hypnotherapist tomorrow because it has been very helpful for me to see her over eating disorder issues. And so I'm going to get into that. Anytime that there's a trigger warning, I'm going to make it really obvious. I'm going to put something down here and have the screen change a little. So then you can just mute it. And when I'm done talking about the triggering issues, you'll see another thing come up so you know to unmute it. So that's how you can protect yourself if you're feeling particularly vulnerable or emotional about the topic. So I'll give you what the topic is. You can decide if you want to sit through it with the mute on or if you want to listen. So that's how I'll do it. So, this morning, for those of you who follow me on Twitter and Facebook know, um, I was tweet, 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 tweeting away. <laughs> um, I was really, really going through it. I was triggered a couple of days ago by um, a documentary that I saw about farm animals, which I won't get into in this video. If you want to know what that's all about, check out my other video post, which is My Dialectical Diet Dilemma and um, you can get details on what that involved. And then a bunch of other things happened. I'm starting grad school. Other personal things are happening. And it was just, for me, it seems like I'll be doing fine and going along really stable, really strong. I'll have like these little dips. But then out of left field, all of a sudden, numerous things will come up at once. And this time, all of those numerous things triggered numerous diagnoses don't you love my air quotes so numerous different diagnoses were triggered at once and it was my you know breaking point for needing to reach out and get help and I had a really interesting experience in the session that I went to today when I went to the clinic so but for those of you who are interested in how the session went when I went to the crisis center today I will just give you a quick lowdown on that before we get into hypnosis um, basically, I had tried to email my therapist and my DBT therapist and my psychiatrist. Turns out DBT therapist was out sick, regular therapist doesn't work on Wednesday. Psychiatrist was so busy she hadn't seen the email. My DBT group was canceled yesterday, my support group was canceled today. And it was like, I got to see this lady, um, this doctor, who was so awesome and, and so non-judgmental and she really listened and she helped me to identify what those pieces were around why I was so triggered by that film and you know the stress of being a, a new graduate student and then we talked through what was going on in my head and why that particular piece in that movie uh, resonated so strongly and was part of me becoming so emotionally dysregulated and then another thing I liked about having her unbiased outside perspective having never met with me before is that she kind of had a no bull sort of approach. Knowing my diagnoses and, and hearing what I was saying about my experience, she basically said, I think that you might have a pattern of trying to self-sabotage right before something really good is going to happen. And then we talked through that whole thing. I was there for an hour and a half. It was really good. And after I left, towards the end of the session, we talked about my inner child wanted dairy. <laughs> and... She doesn't understand why mommy is so distraught over dairy. And because I've had eating disorder issues, I'm so sorry I'm always doing this. I have two cats and I have a little allergy and that's why I'm doing because it it's fur everywhere. So I, I basically honored her and I'm going to work on where I stand with all of this over time because it's just not that easy f for me with the different situations that I have. It's complex, you know, I'm sure you get that. So yes. I went and had a slice of pizza and a little bit of a smoothie and it took down my anxiety a lot because I would had something to eat. So I'm going to keep making sure I eat no matter how I feel and working on that. Speaking of that, I'm going to talk about hypnosis right now. 
And before I do, I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience, why I chose to go into hypnosis and receive sessions, a little bit about my personal story with eating disorder not otherwise specified. So I'm going to put a little trigger warning right here. If you want, you can mute it, and then I will give another alert once I'm done talking about that. And I'm going to talk about uh, what a session is like, what you can likely expect to happen based on my experience and how it works and, and you know what uh, the whole thing about being in a trance so I'll get into that but it's I think it's important for me to share why I decided to go so here we go trigger warning about eating disorder issues <sighs> my whole life I've had kind of a dysfunctional relationship well a dysfunctional relationship with food and so I have from time to time, like in high school, I had issues with thinking that I was fat and um, restricting my calories big time. As I got older, it became more about a weird thing where I would be afraid that I wasn't eating enough, especially if I had a low appetite or loss of appetite, so I would overeat, usually having to force myself, which is not pleasant either. And those are the basic situations that I've, that I've had to deal with around that. And when it comes up, like it has over the past couple of days, of just not having an appetite, losing a desire for food, nothing sounds good, it's really triggering because I want to be well and I want to be healthy and I want to eat. So when all of these negative thoughts are coming in and I literally would get anxious, like I get a surge of maybe it's adrenaline, but just this cold rush through my body, just going to eat something even if it didn't even have dairy in it. I knew I needed help to get back on track because the anxiety was just like whoosh. And you guys know me, I don't like taking the Ativan unless I absolutely have to and I ended up feeling like I absolutely had to today. But something else that has really helped, and I use it as a resource mostly when I've tried a bunch of other skills and I'm still really struggling, and that's primarily because it's a time consuming process and it can be costly. So those are the reasons. and. I went through my skills, I did the pros and cons worksheet, I did um, distracting, I did self-soothing, I did wise mind talking to myself, I, I tried a whole bunch of things, I did guided meditations, I tried the self-hypnosis CD on my own, but my mind is just, it was like this and it, nothing was taking and I was like, okay, I need to go to my next resource, which is hypnosis. And I guess I will take the trigger warning down for the eating disorder information. So you guys that want to come back and hear about hypnosis, that part's primarily over. I'll warn you if there's something coming up that you should go like that on your mute button. So I went to hypnosis because I felt that maybe I was standing in my own way. You know what I mean? Like there's subconscious, there's so many layers to the brain. And if there's a part of me that wants to uh, eat and take care of myself and there's another part that gets anxious and fights against that that's all happening within me so I wanted someone to help me access and get past those points of resistance and help me to tune into the the wise part that wants to really take care of myself so the very first time I went in for a hypnosis session it was a long appointment I want to say it was close to three hours because the uh, hypnotherapist which let me just say real quick, in the state of California, massage therapists, hypnotherapists, a bunch of different professions are not regulated by licensure. So you should really research the person you're going to and make sure that they're certified by some type of like accredited or well-respected uh, organization. I made sure of that with my hypnotherapist because you don't want just anybody putting a sign up on the door and saying that they do it. You know what I mean? Anyway. So in the very first appointment, she got to know me. She asked me a lot of questions. She wanted to know why I was there. Uh, she asked me what I felt was a hindrance in, in terms of accomplishing what I want to accomplish. And also I should mention that I was very open and disclosed to her that I have mental health diagnoses and you know, I'm, I'm under the care of a doctor and I'm on medication and all that good stuff. And so she did require that I get a release so that she could talk to my psychiatrist and therapist to make sure that the hypnotherapy would not um, adversely uh, interact with the treatment that I was receiving through the clinic, which is very responsible and good, and they did talk and everything was fine, and you know, so there I was. And 
you basically, when you go into a session, at least in my experience, you talk about what you, what you're struggling with, and then how you would like things to be, and then she starts to ask you what kind of thoughts come up that um, make you lean towards what you don't want to do, you know, those types of behaviors, and then what kind of thoughts can we replace them with that make you feel like you could lean towards what you want to be doing, and then you lay down after all that's sorted out, and that part can even take an hour just to get that all sorted because of follow-up questions, and she wants everything to be in your language so that your brain receives it better, so you come up with the phrasing. She helps you, of course. And then you lay down. She has a reclining chair where the, the head part goes back and the feet part goes up. Some people probably do it on a couch, you know, just somewhere you can be really relaxed. Her office is really, really... Um, peaceful and quiet and serene and she gives you a little blanket to put on and there's like an air machine that makes that noise so that you know if someone in the hall in another office is walking by they can't hear what's going on and it kind of sounds like the ocean and so it's really soothing and then she t as you're laying down you do these different exercises that help you to get into a deep relaxed state and there are different things like of getting your eye muscles tired different things of progressive relaxation through the body. She names the muscles. And then once you start to get really relaxed, she'll do things and say stuff like, even though you didn't notice it before, but because I suggest it now, you'll notice a tingling sensation in your right hand and it's very strong. And all of a sudden my hand will be like extremely tingly, but nothing else in my whole body. It's really fascinating how the mind works. And one of the things that really sold me on knowing that this was going to work for me was one of the exercises she did once where you practice closing your eyes and she goes through this whole series of things where she says, just for a second, your eyes are not going to work, like they're not going to open up. And of course you know that they do work, but just for a second, under the suggestion of hypnosis, they won't open. And we did the whole thing and I was just like, what? And I like popped up and my eyes were still closed. I'm like, this is so cool. Like it's so awesome how the brain can receive the messages that they that it does when you're in a very relaxed state and that's what she says too is when you're relaxed your brain can receive different types of messages to help you accomplish your goals and to relax and to be receptive to change so that sold me I, I just couldn't believe that I couldn't open my eyes also you'll notice that I mentioned I popped up I think there's a misconception that people think that when you're in a trance, you can't do anything. It's just not true. Some of that comes from a lot of the um, silly shows you see where someone's supposedly hypnotized and they start bok bok balking like a chicken and then they can't stop until somebody comes and breaks the spell. That's not how real hypnotherapy works. That's like a circus sideshow. In real clinical types of hypnotherapy, you become, I'm just going to like lean back because I'm just, it helps me explain. You become so incredibly relaxed that you don't want to move. It feels like if you were to like move your arm up, it would feel like you had like bags of lead or something on it. That's how relaxed you are. But you could, like if you really had to go to the bathroom, you, you could come out of it and get up and go to the bathroom. It's just like, it's really strange. But um, that's how it is. So there's nothing to be afraid of that someone's going to put you in a trance and you're not going to be able to get out and all of that stuff. It is an extremely deep state of relaxation. So I suggest, like I do, go to the bathroom before you start so you don't have that issue come up. Sometimes in hypnosis, you can smell, hear, taste, um any sense, things that aren't there, but that are in the scenery that you're seeing while you're under hypnosis. So I've had that happen. I've heard like an ice cream truck and I would say to her, do you hear that too? Is that out in the hallway? Is that outside? She goes, no, that's in your, that's in your mind. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and later on with the therapist, I helped sort out what that sound was about, which was really extra cool and made a lot of sense. So then you go through all of this and then she starts talking to you about, okay, you know, you're here for this reason and this has been troubling you. And then she goes through those statements you came up with of what's been blocking, then the statements that you came up with for how to get unblocked. And then she starts asking you a lot of questions and doing visualizations to see if you can, in your mind's eye, really experience releasing and letting go of certain things and also receiving and implementing of the new things that you want and then and she'll keep working with you until you're able to see that it's just really really cool and effective
like I said, I've gone for the uh, eating disorder not otherwise specified symptoms and always, always within a few days and usually by the next day or the next night, I'm feeling better, my appetite's back and everything's fine. So I just believe in it personally so much. I'm only a peer. I'm not a doctor or therapist or anything like that. So if, you know, I, I can't recommend anything without you going and checking with your doctor or therapist first. But as a peer, like if we were friends in a room and you said to me, hey, Deb, would you recommend going to, to hypnotherapy? I'd say, well, I go and it, it definitely helps me. So if you guys have any questions about my experience in hypnotherapy or why I've gone or anything at all like that, please be sure to put them below because I guarantee you you're not the only one that wants to know and I will respond to all of you guys and then other people can see your questions and answers too so it'll just help a lot of people hopefully. What else do I want to tell you? Okay, well I have a session tomorrow. So I'll keep you guys posted on how that goes. I think I'm also going to have a video vlog blog coming up soon about the emotion of guilt. And I think it's one that we all deal with in some way, shape, or form. I'm going to be digging into the emotion regulation section of my DBT binder and coming up with some strategies to help myself. And then I'll be sharing that with you guys. So... I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much, you guys, for standing by me and supporting me. I was so, I was so oh, freaked out this morning when I wasn't feeling well. I felt so dysregulated, so unbalanced. Sorry, that's my microwave. I felt so terrified that even though I knew it was unrealistic, I was afraid that I was gonna like lose all these people, all these connections online because. I was having a crisis, especially since I'd recently said, you know, that I've been doing a lot better, which put a lot of pressure on me. So I'm still human, turns out. Thank you guys for watching and for reading my blog posts and connecting with me on Facebook and Twitter. And I will see you guys in the next video or blog post. Bye.